What's up everybody? How you doing today? We got ourselves a well guess what? Another trimmer. I'm trying to like fix all the trimmers I have and get them out of my house. That's basically what's happening right now. So it's trimmer after trimmer after trimmer. So we have a uh, this is a home light. It's one of the lower end um, home lights and uh, it's for definitely like it's 26 C S. So I don't know. So it's supposed to be C C's or I don't know C. Well, if it was C C's, it would be C C, but it's C S. Uh, we have a primer bulb here, functional primer bulb too, which is pretty awesome. Uh, engine turns over. Get a start and stop switch here. It's like it's always in the uh, on, so you kill it like that. Throttle. Let's see what happens here. You pull that. And that happens. And uh, this is a choke. Yeah, that's, that feels really good. Um, fuel lines look super done. Does it these things feel hard? Uh, yeah, all right, cool. This is a simple engine, so it'll be fun to see what we can do if we can bring. One more thing, I want to get uh, this head here. This doesn't have a guard, so we're going to pull it off of that trimmer there. I already pulled it off. See if we can fandangle it on this uh, thing. You see that? Looks like they were trying to fix it. That's a nail. That's definitely not factory. Um, it's comical, actually. It's like, why bother? Alright, great. You know what they say. If you, uh, if you have a nail and a hammer, that's the only tools you have, and guess what? Everything becomes something you put a nail in. Yeah, I totally butchered that. Let's check for spark, shall we? Tighten that down a little more. Right there. See what we see. See what we can see. See what you can see. I can see, but I don't know what you'll see. Yep. All right. There's spark. Hopefully you saw it. I saw it. We got spark. This is the best way to try to look for spark. Let's just pull this off and see if we can actually see spark directly. Well, that is a tight fit. Jeez. might seem redundant, but I, uh, I do like to double check both ways, because spark under pressure is different than spark in typical atmospheric pressure, which is outside the chamber like this, you know? So if we can generate spark inside the chamber, then we want to something. a little weak to me to be honest with you usually get a lot more flutter happening before we proceed I think we should probably try to see if this will actually try to start because it looks like it's in pretty good condition so I don't know how it failed but either way um, if you know oftentimes you need to know what the fuel mixture is going to be it's going to be on the cap so this is going to be 50 to 1. So we just like dribble a little fuel in it. Oh, my God. 
That's a good sign. Try again, see what happens. Maybe not, maybe. All right, that's it. I think it just burnt everything out. Okay, so it, it can run and wants to run, so. So what do you think's happening here with this uh, nail? This trimmer had some, they were trying to fix it and it looks like, you know, there's a moment when you kind of check out, you're like, ah, it's not worth it, or I don't want to do this anymore. So it looks like that kind of happened. Happens to the best of us. Okay, so that holds that. Hmm. I want to see what's under here, because I would like to try to find a way to attach the other trimmer head. And uh, I just don't know what that it's going to look like. It's too big. So it's five sixteenths. Okay, so we got a hole there, right? And the other trimmer is riveted right here. So we're gonna have to try to maybe drill that out and see if we can screw that down there like that. Yeah, let's give it a try. So that looks riveted, and I think we can just probably drill it out. Well, not looks riveted, it's absolutely riveted. More definitive language, shall we? Gonna like keep going up in size. <sighs> that one was nine sixty fourths. I just did so. Let's go to uh, three sixteenths. Yeah, let's do. Drill bits out is like adult proof. Uh, 
and you poke yourself. A little more cut in. It's a little top magic cut in feel fluid. You don't really have to push too much when you're dealing with like aluminum. It's like soft. See how it just this stuff is so cheap. All you gotta do is just start to drill. It just comes right out. So I'm gonna go to seven thirty seconds. Let's see what we can do with that. Oh, well, that was easy. All right, so should we lift right off? Right. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's what we want. We're going to try to put that in the other. All right, so let's go ahead and fix this here. No, let's keep it broken. Yeah, that was, like, stupid to say. <laughs> anyway, you think it'll work? I don't know, man. It's a tight fit right there, it looks like to me. So I would think something like this. You know, just like that. Yeah, we're just experimenting together anyway, so if it works, it works, it doesn't work. That's okay. No stress. No stress. Okay, not too crazy because that is aluminum. Alright. So, what do we have? Did I do this on the right side? <laughs> yeah, why didn't you tell me, people? You know, you saw me make that mistake. Uh, you're like, no! Turn it around! Okay. Now listen, it's good to be alive, right? Every day above ground's a good day. Don't stress about anything, man. You know, time is one of those things you don't have a lot of. It's the most precious resource that we waste. I think that's a quote by a president of the United States. And I know I waste a lot of it, and have wasted a lot of it. I'm trying to minimize how much, how much time I waste. But you know, as you get better, you get wiser with about your time. How you spend it, who you spend it with. At least that's what's happened to me. So let's see. That goes in like that. Can we get it? Yeah, it should fit. It absolutely should fit. Famous last words. It should fit. Come on. We can do this. We can work it out. You know what happened? That. I think that's, uh... Yeah, that's totally stopping it. So this here... It's having a hard time fitting through that. It's not a problem, really, because, uh... I'm sorry, the nut. So what we can do is, uh... Just kind of drill it out. You know, that space. What do you think? I think, I think you know that I know that you know that I know that you think we should do this. So I'm going to mark it a little bit. Get a feel for when the collision happens. Okay. So there we go. If we can draw that out right there, then we should be good to go. So you can kind of see where the hole is. I'll make it a little brighter for you. So right, right there. Yeah, we need to uh, drill that out, and I'm thinking, because it's going to settle in the middle, I could probably go straight shot right in the middle, right there. I'm going to do the biggest drill bit I have. And like this. I 
think that'll do it. Maybe that's a little overkill. I don't know. Let's uh, let's, let's scale it back a little. We can always go bigger later. Yeah, let's try that. Well, that looks really off. That's cool. All right, let's give it a try. See, see what uh, see what we end up with, right? Yeah, it's not not exactly happy about that spacing on that. No, that that that, that works. Yeah, that's perfect. I'll be. Can you see? Back it off a little. Yeah, actually worked well. It's not the best, but it's pretty darn good. So I'm sure they go like that. Toss this wing nut on the back right here. a little bit more. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go big or go home as they say. Yeah, I need to. Just a little bit more. So that means we're gonna go all the way. Yeah, let's see. Right, after looking at it a little closer, right, it was over there. I noticed the bump, the the nut is getting caught up over there. So I gotta like kind of like go a little sideways here. Let's see how that's gonna work. That's that's great. It's working well. things about plastic you can do that okay so I'll wind it up a little bit and then uh, I'm gonna look a little closer here I can see you won't be able to see but I'm See if the, the nuts get in by. Okay, there's nothing, uh, nothing blocking it anymore. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, we okay, get so let's see if we get that wing nut on back here. Grab your fingernail. Yeah, that's good, man. We did it. Good. Transferred one guard to the other. Doesn't look wonky at all. Nope. Totally the right orientation. Maybe on Vectron. Oh, we're gonna have to turn that around. That does not make sense. Makes sense. That 
That looks better. Let's pull this apart and see what we uh, what we're working with. This looks like we have uh, three. Uh, so it looks like a T20 probably. Yep. Four. There's a fourth one right here. engine looks really clean actually so the gasket here is well intact there's no leakage uh, I think maybe we can probably well, well you can't see let me show you sorry so this engine is in really good condition so usually like you see the uh, oil everywhere so we have no nothing severe happening down in there or world's worst headlamp um, so that that we're gonna leave that cylinder as is um, over here back here the there's some right here there's some uh, issues with leak like uh looks like the this might i should probably pull the muffler off and uh, clean that uh i bet you everything all the issues that this has is probably related to this fuel line and carburetor but uh, the cylinder is pretty good all right to get the muffler off i'm going to pull this entire engine out so A lot of things on the screw here. That goes into plastic. It's a little bit thinner than the um, the other four I pulled out. I'll show them to you. I feel like I should respond to those sounds of the neighbors. Okay, this one goes into metal. Okay, that makes sense. It's a thinner thread, sorry. Yeah, this screws into metal too, so it should also be a, uh, like a like a much smaller pitch angle. I'm sorry, that's redundant. It's a little redundant. It's going to be a smaller pitch on the threads or higher thread counts per inch. It's going to go into metal.
pull those two off first. Let's see if that'll separate the engine. So you gotta play the uh, drinking game every time I drop it. You drink. That counts, that's a drop. Yep, they sure do. These are smaller and they go into uh, plastic so the thread's a little, a little wider. drop off the table, so damage your, uh... okay, we have a throttle linkage, we have to get out of here properly, properly move, remove, okay, here we go, I'm going to give you one choice, so not exactly rocket science here, okay, so, we have a, looks like there's no way around it. I'm going to pull this. Yeah, I can't. No, actually, I should be able to. Okay. Can you see? Yeah. Okay. So we got. Okay, so to get this linkage out. So it kind of snakes through that hole there. Yeah. I was, uh, hmm. Okay. easy okay held in by linkage and we still got a couple things get the muffler off either way we're gonna have to take it off anyway so hmm. let's go ahead and do it right now Let's 
220. So this will be the uh, ground. It'll be the where to kill attaches. This is going to be the positive. This speeds up the electrons. So that way we can get a spark down the wire to the actual spark plug. Oh, I see what's happening here. This entire uh, pull starts attached to this. Okay. Yeah, this is... really make this thing serviceable, don't they? Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to have to pull this carburetor off anyway. Drink up, drink up, drink up. Man, the amount of times I dropped that thing. Okay. So it's those two. It's just like a skim filter. There's no. Is there no air filter in here? Well, holy cow, this thing had no air filter. Is it not supposed to? I'm pretty sure this should have an air filter. 
Yeah, I betcha. Okay, so yeah, like right here. Anyway. Let's see which one of these is actually attached to, to the fuel filter. Oh man, this that's a fuel line. It looks it's like a piece of steel. It's I mean it moves like a piece of steel. Okay, so what do we know here? We know that This bottom one here is the actual, uh, yeah, that looks like it's marked so well. This is the uh, one that's attached to the fuel line, and this is going to be the return. Okay. So, so if, yeah, there it is. There's the gasket. Hmm. Okay. Original problem. Here we go. That's what I wanted to solve. Well, that just broke right off. Screw it. There you go. Turn. Yeah. What frequency is that? <laughs> it's, when your fuel line has frequency, that's never a good thing. Okay. So we're not going to go too far. We're going to leave that alone there. Let's pull this exhaust off. T25. That's two drinks. <sighs> so. That's that. This is the gasket here. Hmm. That's cool. That's dirty. So inside of there needs a little cleaning. I mean, in general, the the engine doesn't leak, you know? I don't want to see, like, what's that? Hmm. Is that a leaky engine? Oh, yeah. It looks like it does leak. Or did leak. But there really is no other way around this. I'm gonna have to pull this flywheel off. And um yeah, there's just another way around it. So, so as I saw the, the, the gasket around the engine leaking, I was like, uh, this thing is it's had better days. The carburetor's interesting. I've never seen it. I've never seen that 
the, the brand before. It's Chinese, don't get me wrong, but I've just never seen that brand before. Get that off. Uh, that is a uh, gonna need a pin, just a little pin wrench. Right tool for the job. So just gonna have to follow the off. It kind of tells you. Off is like all over the place. Sometimes it's clockwise and does it's kind of clockwise. And what I can tell you is that I have two of these tools. And the first subscriber that gets to a thousand likes gets one of these. I think I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge getting this thing off. I mean, back together. This, uh, this is very, it's very different. It's an unusual setup with the pull start here. Loctite, probably. Okay. Like that. That comes right off. It kind of goes in there. It's the only reason why I pull this off because pull start. All right. Oops, 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 oops. I still feel in here. going in as if we're not take the fuel tank off it's got three bolts holding it this is a t25 
We didn't get too much of an elbow shot. Okay, that's those three. It's pretty neat. I haven't seen those before. So that just sat like that. Fascinating. Then See how it's failed all here, all the wet spots. So we did, did this engine in. Either those are torqued down really well or I'm just breaking the Loctite free. Or I'm sorry, not thread not Loctite, I mean like a thread locker. I don't know what they're using. small friends of ours. Looks like we have six of them. Two, four, yep, we have six. Budge easily. So you can see where it failed, right here. Can you see? Uh, yeah, you can. Okay, see where the oil got passed right there on this side. This side's pretty dry right there. That's dry up top, but it got passed right there. Sorry. 
Again, this part's dry. That's dry, and it got pass right here. As you can tell, this gasket failed. Okay. I'm going to unscrew the piston. Here. Well, this should be pretty free right now. Um, so this this should be free. Uh, is there a gasket there? Hmm. It's a whole lot of gasket. It should be right on that. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Yeah, it feels like it. There it is. So that is a gasket there. I will pull that off later. All right, so let's see. Can we, uh... Okay, this is all like one piece, looks like here. Yeah, there's no cylinder head that comes off. Just kind of made one big cast in. Well that's interesting. It's a very different 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 approach. But that means that so I want to get that snap ring off. My my idea is that this snap ring like the uh that's what holds the shaft, think of it as the crankshaft with the magneto on it. I think I, I think you can just probably like pull this off. Something like that. Oops. Um. Oh, that has a has a shaft on it. Let you see. Oh, so far, so close, so far, so close. Now that has a shaft on it. Probably got a washer too, yep, I'm sure it is. There's a washer right here. Behind it, can you see? Oh, washer here. Uh, I thought I can just kind of pull it off. Oh, there we go, snap rings right there. My whole point is I want to get the piston out of there, so. That doesn't just come right off, because. You need to make space for it. To make space for it. I think I'm too close. Back up, so. Yeah, definitely too close. I didn't see much. I'm oh, sorry about that. Alright, the point is, I gotta get 
the piston out of there. That's my goal. And I can't do that because I can't just lift this off. I don't have enough clearance. So I thought maybe if I removed a snap ring from there, that this shaft came right out. You know. This is what I thought would happen. Alright, at this point I'm just going to give up. I'm going to probably dip it in the ultrasonic cleaner like this so I can keep the bearings away from the uh, media uh, medium that's, that it's in, which is like carburetor cleaner. It'll destroy this rubber. So I'll dip it in like that, clean it with the other parts, and then uh, put it back together. Maybe, I'm not sure. Let's kind of like put this back together and uh, it's not going to really sit hold well because you know this is going to probably fall back off. That's totally fine. Uh, you know let's do this. Let's get the magneto on. The magneto has uh, this, uh, those, we have two of them. We're only going to put one on right because one of them will um, Grounds out. I don't know. I don't remember exactly which one. I think it's a, maybe the top one. But one of them provides ground, so that we can kill spark. I'm just gonna partially put this back together. So. That was a T20. T25. Yeah, T20. It's not going to be too tight, I just need to like, um, just hold it. I'm going to use the magnetic, um, Properties. So, oh, by the way, I cleaned all this. You, yeah, I didn't show it to you, but I wiped it all down and uh, did a lot of work on it. Get in as clean as I possibly can. Just gonna get the key lined up. Maybe it's upside down. Yeah, that's probably why. Okay. Till the magnet grabs it. Okay, good. So we're gonna leave that like that for now. Yeah. Well, we'll get this. We'll set the air gap. Uh, actually, no. I don't know if we can. Do, yeah, let's try it. Let's see if we can set the air gap now. Uh, so we're gonna use our feeler gauge, right? Or you can use a business card. Uh, that's a that's a common one you can do. Or we're gonna use uh, point. Uh, point one zero or uh, ten thousandths of an inch or 25 millimeter. 
I mean 0.25 millimeter, 25 millimeter would be awfully large. So when you do that, you just kind of want to slide it in between the, uh, make sure the, this is loose. Yeah, because it's going to go up and down like that, right? And then we'll take our uh, feeler gauge here. It's too small on the side. Hmm. I just had it, did I? 0.25. Turn him into a liar. It's a bronze. And there's uh, an aluminum. So, okay. There you go. There's the aluminum one. Okay. So you're gonna go like this. Slide it in between the magneto, the magneto, and turn the flywheel till it gets to the magnetic part. See, it just locked down just now. Right now, the um, the magnet and the uh, flywheel are all trying to get close to each other. Then you can just go ahead and tighten this down. Okay. Now that should be the air gap, and that should generate a spark when it turns. I'm going to put the other one in later, and I'll double check the uh, this displacement between the flywheel and the magneto. Almost forgot to put the snap ring on. Uh, so there's two of them. And they are the same. Yeah, nothing special. And then one goes here just to keep this um, bearing from flying off. So, you know, I mean, whatever. You could, if you were having issues with like a grindy sound or this is loose, you know, I would say that your best bet would be to replace the bearing. And bearings are uh, ridiculously cheap. Totally worth it. Everything spins, you know, so you gotta you gotta make sure uh, your bearings. Did I just say everything? That's a gross generalization. Lots of things spin, and uh, they require maintenance because of that. So it's really important. You look at where they spin. Where they spin is you're, you'll find a, you'll find bearings. Okay, so we need to get this snap ring on right here. And it's important to just, you know, replace the bearings. Also, you want to get familiar with bearings too because they are all very different. You have some tapered style bearings. Um, be careful with this because this has a lot of uh, tension on it. I would say probably put on some glasses. You know, you only get smacked in the eye. And then, uh, it's much cheaper, $7 safety glasses than the ER trip. Oops, I just lose that. Sure did. I would like to get a 90 degree angle snap ring pliers for this. That would be the better tool. Come on. It's not going to work.
ten minutes later, right? It's just a snap around. Should be easy. <laughs> oh, it's, it's going to be one of those kind of things. I can feel it already. Let's see. Go back. Okay. Oops, that's my fingernail. I might want that. Ah. Alright. That was awkward. Grab my fingernail. Okay, just make sure it's oh, there you go. It's sitting in the groove all the way around. So I took some time to clean this uh, um, crank, bottom to crank case off. You can think about it as like your, your head gasket of your car. It's like the equivalent of that. So, you know, I want to, sh you know, one of the things that's neat is like, uh, once you understand small motors, you can just extrapolate to something larger. But, uh, you know, all you're doing is like, as with anything motor, don't, as long as it's not rusted to a point where it's like unusable, how things fail is just, the, the gaskets that's, that, that keep all the metal pieces and fluids separate. That's it. So, car is the same thing. You know, you just replace gaskets and you're good to go. The metal, as long as the metal is fine, which is most of the time it always is, it's not warped or anything like that. You can just, if it's warped, you can have it just buy that one piece, which is like a cylinder head. You know, usually the cylinder block is made of like cast iron steel, and that doesn't warp. But you can just replace the cylinder head and just you know, or get it resurfaced, you know. But anyway, here you go. So this, I, uh, I took some time to clean this off. I cleaned this side off also. Now I want to talk about this. this. There's a gasket that goes here. It's this this gasket here, like that, right? Now this gasket is is, is has failed, and that's the reason why we had, we got this far. Now uh, you I suspect that it's possible to just use a silicone RTV right here. I've never tried it before on these smaller motors. I think it's possible if you're if you're in a bind, I think it should work because it works for cars. I don't see why it wouldn't work for you know a um a small motor. It's got less pressure and less heat. So you can give it a try if you're in a bind. Uh, I would say um other than that, yeah, you know but I just wanted to share that with you. I'm not gonna do that, but uh, I'm gonna use a gasket. This has some leftover gasket on there I need to get off. And, uh, so I'm gonna square a little WD-40 on there. Let's try this first. It's, kinda, it's, it's as brass. I don't know if that's gonna work. But plastic, plastic eraser. Yep, that's about as useful as it gets. Sometimes it just gets so caked on there you can't really get it off the gaskets. And like I said, I've been trying to find the least um, damaging way to get this thing off. But I haven't found it, so we're going to use this. Brass. I'll use a 1000 grit sandpaper just to we're wet, wet sand in it with uh, with a little bit of uh, WD-40. Get the surface nice and flat and shiny. Can you still see? Okay. I might, 
Might have done it. That looks really good. That was a good candidate for a little brass wire wheeling. Okay, cool. We need to work on this fuel tank a little bit. So I, I uh, I left the um, this line in there. This line was not broken off. It was just brittle. So it's going to give us our size. It's got a nice frequency of D. Um, I don't even know if that's a good measurement, but anyway, you know, frequency is how you hear sound. So um, it, the vibration that is in your ear. So, uh, this is what I'm thinking, right? I think we can go like this. We can go... Let's just check this fuel line, make sure it actually fits. Because they come in like so many different... Like four different sizes. This is going to be the one that goes to the fuel filter. You yeah, know, it works really well. Okay, so we can use this line. We got to get this out of here. Right? And uh, we're going to use... Since it's, since it's currently not fully compromised, what we can do is uh, use it as a reference to how long we need to get this line. Uh huh. So, uh, need a hookity hook hook, something hooky. Sharp, yes, like this, there we go. So. Now pull this up so Ugh. Oh boy, that looks like it's gonna break. Okay. There we go. So we got that. And uh just wanna get this fuel filter off. Got a nice little uh, spring on it. That's cool. So I don't want to cut it, but uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna just cut it. Let's try. It. Push it down. Turn it. There we go. Yeah. I'm just going to cut it off. Keep that there. Take this. Pull it out. There you go. Okay, so this has a little spring on the uh, end to help clamp down. Let's see if we can. Uh, Get that off and uh, reuse it. Actually, before we do that, let's just kind of uh, get a feel for the length of this. Okay, so it's not long. We'll mark it. There. So, let's see how we're gonna do this. Now let's just put the other fuel filter on first. No, sorry. Wait. Ah, I'm so confused. One second. Yeah, let's get. I want to use that spring again. So. silicone spray. Yeah. Goes a long way. Mm 
Springs off. That's it. I don't need that anymore. So let's go like this. Remember to get this into. Oh man, which side am I? Uh, I already forgot. Never mind. I just. I'll figure it out. Will I? I don't know. Let's just do it right, right now. Go to there, to there. Like that. Yeah, okay. You know what? We'll want to measure it after because I gotta get this in the tank. I forgot about that fiasco. So we know that that was the mark there. I mean, we're going to go a little higher when we cut that off. So let's just take a straight cut here. Take the spring, slide that on like that. Here's our new uh, fuel filter. all the way down. Yeah. Slide the spring back. There you go. The spring's clamped down. We'll pull that in. Okay. I'll kind of like push it back in, I suppose. Yeah. Kind of get a reference point for how much of it was sticking out to. How much do we need? We know that we need it to sit at the bottom of the tank. Okay. That's good. So that's the lowest part of the tank. And then we need to have. Right there was where it protruded. So from here to here. Okay, let's get a little extra. We'll go to we'll go to right there. Okay, so that's the uh, fuel. filter. This is going to be the return. Now this might work. I'm unsure if the size, the length is right, but it might work. can safely say I should have done this one first. Uh. Alright, well you see how we see what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna pull that through. 